place of mystery, a place of questioning who you are and who you're meant to be. When you can't find home where it used to be and your roots have faded into memory, no, you're not alone in this new Sisters who came before and showed the way Throughout time, we've been pushed into the dark Called to find the light within our broken hearts And let it shine, and we can't do it journey becomes our home. Some days it feels like searching for water in the sand. Sometimes it feels like falling with nowhere to land. Yeah, there are ups and downs that'll turn you round. They're all around and throughout time We've been pushed into the dark Call to find the light within our broken hearts And let it shine And we can't do it on our own Gotta find our family in the unknown And side by side we'll go by stepping stones Till the journey becomes our home When the walls are closing in We find our way out through the door Into a light that's so much brighter Than our hearts have known before When we heed the call to follow The voice that burns within our core We join the ranks of seekers walk Throughout time, we've been pushed into the dark, called to find. Throughout time, we've been pushed into the dark, called to find the light within our broken hearts and let it shine. And we can't do it. Good morning and welcome to People's Church. Our opening words today are by Dana Worsma. Often people say that they love coming to a place with so many like-minded people. I know just what they are getting at and I know they aren't getting it quite right. I don't want to be with a bunch of people who think just like me. I want to be in a beloved community where I don't have to think like everyone else to be loved, to be eligible for salvation. I want to be with people who value compassion, justice, love, and truth, though they have different thoughts and opinions about all sorts of things. I want to be with independent-minded people of good heart. I want to be with people 
who have many names and no name at all for God. I want to be with people who see me in me goodness and dignity, who also see my failings and foibles and who still love me. I want to be with people who feel their interconnection with all existence and let it guide their footfalls upon the earth. I want to be with people who see life as a paradox and don't always rush to resolve it. I want to be with people who are willing to walk the tightrope that is life and who will hold my hand as I walk mine. I want to be with people who let church call them in a different way of being in the world. I want to be with people who support, encourage, and even challenge each other to higher and more ethical living. I want to be with people who inspire one another to follow the call of the Spirit. I want to be with people who covenant to be honest and engaged and kind and who strive to keep their promises and hold me to the promises I make. I want to be with people who give themselves, who share their hearts and minds and gifts. I want to be with people who know that human community is often warm and generous, sometimes challenging, and almost always a grand adventure. In short, I want to be with people like you. Welcome to People's Church Community on the last of our summer services. These opening words reflect what I have missed in this pandemic, spontaneous interactions with many people, despite my introverted nature. At People's Church, we welcome everyone, no matter your race, previous religious history, gender identification, or who you love. We especially welcome you if you are visiting us for the first time. We only ask that you join us with an open mind and open heart. Together, we have more strength than each of us has alone. I'm Bob Davis, a member of the Sunday Services Committee. People's Church is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association, or UUA. The mission of People's Church is to be a beloved community embracing and serving our diverse world. Here we seek truths in the teachings of all major religions, science, philosophy, and the arts. Here we recognize that examining our lives and assumptions and listening to each other's perspectives are as important as the answers we find and profess. We have two announcements today. Number one, we are holding a fall bazaar outdoors three weeks from now on Saturday, September 25th in our parking lot. The committee is hard at work planning for a terrific group of artists and vendors and your homemade items for people's specialties. Please go to the church website and click on the bazaar logo down near the bottom to reach the sign up and list the foods or crafts you plan to contribute. And with such a short time to prepare, your help is especially needed inviting people you know from the broader community. Masks will be required for entry, even though it's outside. People's people, please plan to park at the Centerpoint Church and ride or shuttle back to make room for our guests if you are able. Please note the event starts at 10 a.m. Entry will begin at that time. Thank you for all you can do to make this a success. Please come and shop local for your special treasures. And our second announcement from the bylaws committee, a reminder that the proposed revisions of the bylaws are now available on the church website. An informational meeting will take place before the in-person meeting on September 26th. A link to the bylaws website will be placed in the chat box. And now let us sing.
every week, we light a chalice at the beginning of our service, symbolizing the creation of sacred space as we focus our thoughts on today's service. Putting aside temporarily our long daily lists, worries, and cares, if you're willing and able to light a chalice now, I ask that you enter into the chat box where you are lighting your chalice and whether it's real or symbolic. Chalice lighting words are by Judith Quarles. At this hour in small towns and big cities, in single rooms and ornate sanctuaries, many of our sibling Unitarian Universalist congregations are also lighting a flaming chalice. As we light our chalice today, let us remember that we are part of a greater community of faith. May this dancing flame inspire us to fill our lives with the Unitarian Universalist ideals of love, justice, and truth. It is good to be with you across all this distance. And I have a, another announcement that I forgot to tell Bob to share. And that is next week is the beginning of our four week experiment with, another, with other modes of worship. So we will have services at this time at 1045 outside on the church grounds for people who feel like that is a risk they're willing to take. And we will continue to gather on Zoom at 7 p.m. on Sundays and have kind of a closing to our week service that way. And that's where the preaching and more music will be and outside will be more ritual and movement. So I hope to see you one way or another through a screen or with my mask on. It is our practice every time we gather for worship to set aside some time to share the joys and the sorrows, the triumphs, the concerns and the milestones in our lives. And so at this point, we will pause our recording and I will invite you to type into our chat box the joys and sorrows that animate your lives this week and in our wider world. I invite you to connect to a, to a place of stillness within you. Sources of reason, and radiance, sources of courage and compassion. Keep watch with those who work or watch or weep this day. May the suffering be soothed. May the weary find rest. May the dying and those who love them find peace. May the joyous be shielded. And may all of us know that we are wrapped in a love that surrounds us always a web that connects us to all that exists. People's church members and friends are generous in so many ways, giving of their time, talent, and treasure. All three of these gifts are crucial to a vibrant church. This summer, volunteers expanded the playground for our children and started a year-long conservation project insulating the outer walls of the church. The materials for such projects require money for purchase, which fortunately was available in our investment accounts due to your past generosity and the generosity of members that precede us. We have recently opened our church sanctuary for the collection of household goods for the soon to arrive Afghan refugees, because this is a church that acts on its beliefs. Giving link is in the chat box. As a previously beloved minister once said, give until you feel proud.
We are here to be lifted in love. Look at the birds they tell us. We are here to be lifted in love. Look at the trees they tell us. We're here to be lifted in love. To listen to love. As a flower raises its face to the sun, we are all one, here to be lifted in grace and love. We are here to be lifted in love, look at the sky it tells us. We are here to be Please join me in giving thanks for the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance. We bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. And now let us sing. Good morning. Um, if you have a hymnal at home, this is number 346. Come sing a song with me. I'll give you a second to grab that, but it's pretty easy to pick up just from the first line of each verse. Mm. Two, three, four, Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me that I might know your mind. And I bring you hope when hope is hard to find. And I'll bring a song and a rose in the winter time. Come dream a dream with me. Come dream a dream with me. Come dream a dream with me that I might know your mind. And I'll bring you home when hope is hard to find and i'll bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time come walk in rain with me come walk in rain with me come walk in rain with me that i might know your mind and i bring you home when hope is hard to find and i bring a song of love and a rose in the winter time Come share a rose with me. <clears throat> Come share a rose.
rose with me. Come share a rose with me that I might know your mind. And I bring you home when hope is hard to find. And I bring a song and a rose in the winter time. I have two readings today to introduce our topic. One is Isolation by Jean Marie Laska. Isolation is a loneliness that feels forced upon you like a punishment. Solitude is a loneliness you choose and embrace. I think great things can come out of solitude, out of going to a place where all is quiet except the beating of your heart. Community means strength by Starhawk. We are all longing to go home to some place we have never been, a place half remembered and half envisioned. You can only catch glimpses of from time to time, community. Somewhere there are people to whom we can speak with passion without having the words catch in our throats. Somewhere a circle of hands will open to receive us Eyes will light as we enter. Voices will celebrate with us whenever we come into our own power. Community means strength that joins our strength to do the work that needs to be done. Arms to hold us when we falter, a circle of healing, a circle of friends, someplace where we can be free. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted our ability to gather in community, to gather with friends. Because the pandemic was particularly deadly for people age 60 and older, retirement communities went into varying degrees of lockdown and isolation, trying to protect their residents. Retirement community of Friendship Village went into lockdown March 16, 2020. No outside visitors were allowed indoors. Communal meals and other indoor group activities stopped. After vaccinations, the community partially opened up again as determined by public health authorities and the infection rates among residents and staff. Multiple members of People's Church live in different parts of Friendship Village since before the pandemic. Three have agreed to share their pandemic stories. Joanne Dodson lives in an independent living apartment. Jean Bright lives in the health center. And Martha Beverly lives in a garden home on the campus. Each has a different perspective. My apologies if I have excluded someone who wishes to speak, but at the end, uh, we will allow other members of Friendship Village, if they wish, to type comments in the chat box. And now, reflection number one from Joanne Dodson. Hello, everyone. Nice to be together one way or another. I'm first gonna talk about a paper that I wrote in May, 2020 to show that things haven't changed too much. Um, because I've looked at this paper several times since May, 2020 and realized that it's, things are still in effect. It's called Cooped Up. I, write it, I, I wrote it for a, a memoir writing class that we have here at Friendship Village, something that I really enjoy because I've been uh, trying to write my memoirs for years and I never get around to it. So. This time we meet almost every week and, and there is a, it's always a new topic that I can write about. So this one's called Cooped Up. I have never been as isolated as I am now. 
This has been a very challenging last several months for me. With the new COVID virus rampant, my current housing at Friendship Village has hunkered down so completely that I don't even talk to or see another person on some days. This is definitely not my usual lifestyle. I was at a loss as to how to cope at first. Watching TV all day never interested me. Neither did reading all day, although I love to read and I have three stuffed bookcases in my two room apartment. Finally, one of my longtime interests came to me. I have always loved to travel, starting with the life-changing six week driving trip to the West Coast, which my family took when I was eight years old, right after World War II ended. My brothers and I still treasure the detailed write-up and pictures in a scrapbook which our mother created after the trip. It gets passed around regularly among the three of us. Now that I'm in my 80s, I am mostly content to reminisce about the many places I have been or read about. Exotic spots, which I wish I still had visited, both when I was growing up and when I had my own family home, we often hosted visitors from faraway countries. That was a perfect introduction to other cultures. Our visitors usually spoke some English or came with someone who did, luckily for me. Now I'm content to shrink my travel dreams to visiting within the United States. Our sons live in Oregon and we have visited there many times. However, in the past year, my travel destinations have shrunk further to Northern Michigan every summer. In the past, we would drive north several times a year. These short jaunts were often for visiting college friends or a fall color tour always an invigorating experience. Alas, this past year, I have rarely been past Portage, Michigan for a shopping fling at Myers on South Westmage. So it is back to the bookcase and travelogues on TV. Should I start with Chicago, New York, the Southwest, or one of our many wonderful national parks? I will never run out of inspiring places to visit, either in person or online. And I wanted to update this uh, paper a little bit about how things are since then. And I, I did talk with several people who live at Friendship Village to get their perspective on how things are, are going here. One person said the COVID uh, epidemic isn't impacting on her very much because she has a cottage in Michigan that she can go to because uh, we are allowed to leave here. We just have to go into isolation for two weeks when we get back. So she, uh, she can go up to her cottage. And, and I think quite a few people at Friendship Village have gone to other places because I notice there aren't nearly as many people in the dining room for dinner as uh, there used to be. Speaking of dining room for dinner, that is about the only time that I see other people while I'm here now. That's where things have changed so much. Um, we have started more activities within Friendship Village. Um, we have a very big, uh, uh, auditorium like room where we have a lot of programs. We don't sit next to each other. Uh, we have some social distancing, we wear masks, but we have been able to have an increasing amount of activities in the past uh, few weeks, which has really helped my morale a lot. Um, and now every time uh, visitors come to Friendship Village, they're screened for COVID and uh, then their address is recorded so that even in case it, find, it turns out that they are exposed to somebody with COVID, they, or if someone here gets COVID, they can check back with whoever has been here to visit to, to see if that might be the source of the problem. There are some activities that have brought me a lot of joy. Um, one of them is uh, meeting for dinner. And that's the only time that I essentially talk with other people. At least that's the way it was for several months. Things have improved quite a bit now. In fact, I have my son here visiting. He, he stays in a different apartment at Friendship Village than I do, but we are able to spend quite a bit of time together and that has made a huge difference in my morale in the past few weeks. There are a lot fewer tables at the, in the dining room than there used to be so that there will be more space around and we have no, no more than four people at the table. Um, even though all of us have been vaccinated. The, the vaccination rate here in the building is very high, I think. And that's partly because they brought the vaccination clinic right here to Friendship Village. We didn't have to go anywhere to get it done. Um, so, I, so we're managing, it isn't very much fun. We look forward to quote freedom again. Most of the activities that I've been involved in in recent years have been outside of Friendship Village. This is the first time that I have really paid a lot of attention to what's going on in my own apartment. I discover things here I've really never noticed before. 
So I'm finding the best out of this as I possibly can. So I consider myself very fortunate. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This is Jean Bright. And I haven't even tried to think how many years I've been here at uh, Friendship Village. Uh, but it's a lot of years. I have gone through, what, three or four ministers? And uh, I've liked them all. And I think we all got a lot of good things from each one. I, uh, and my husband were good friends of the Bensons. And they invited us to come to church with them. And I, we went with them to church and I fell in love with Mr. Palmer. And that was a very uh, wonderful thing for me. I had been a Congregationalist when I, was growing up in Grand Rapids. And I met so many wonderful friends. And I don't know how I could have gotten through these past over one year, almost, is it almost two years? that we were isolated and i mean isolated and i had forever worn one of these and if we get another positive results we have to go back in isolation and that means not even uh, anybody could come to see you. I have two sons now. Uh, and one lives here in Portage and the other lives in Oregon. And they both have retired. And so I uh, thought, oh my goodness, I'll have so much time and they can come and visit me. And this did happen uh, about a month ago or less. My son, uh, Tom, came from Oregon. He drove because he brought his dog and he didn't want to take him on on the airplane so he drove and that was wonderful that I could see him and touch him and uh, give him a kiss and that's what I think I missed most when I we were in isolation was touching people and, and touching my son that lives, Jeff, who lives here in town. And I was very happy to have them both so attentive to me. I didn't realize that they were isolated too, and, and they missed me. And telephones are wonderful, but uh, I want to touch them and kiss them and 
just talk and watch them talk. This and both of them are very talkative, and they have a lot of friends, and they make friends easily, and that's great because. Um, they have moved around quite a bit. Uh, Jeff is married to Kathy, and they have two children, and they have two grandchildren. So, uh, That is wonderful also, uh, but when they say we were isolated, that means not doing the touching, and, but my two boys have been very attentive and uh, it, it has surprised me how uh, much they, I think we love each other and uh, I know that when I die that they will go on and uh, work with their n new friends and their old friends. And when Tom came here, we got together with my two boys and Jeff as a wife and two grandchildren. Which who live the grandchildren do not live in town, so it's an occasion when they come. But it's a loving reminder that we do love each other, and uh, neither one of them have. Uh, Going to Unitarian or Universalist, they think they have their own religion, which is fine, and they are both wonderful, loving people, uh, sons. And I think that I, when we were together, it said, you know, I'm not going to be living too much longer. And they were quite surprised how easily I can talk about death. But I have to remind them that I am 94 years old, so I don't know how many more years or days or what other that I will be around, and I hope that they will remember all the things that they have learned from this church. They have gone here since they were born. And uh, we lost Stephen when he was 19. And that was a horrible experience for all of us and 
to lose a child is difficult. And uh, they say you never forget or your child, and that is so true. I don't know how much longer I need to speak, but I wanted to say how terrible it is to lose contact with all the people here at And uh, that means we talk to each other through the window, looking outdoors where they had to stand or sit. And that is probably the hardest thing in that we all went through and uh, I think that the, the hardest thing for most people and I happen to have a very nice window that I look out and look at the front entrance so I can see people coming and going and so um, that's how I get along is watching people come and go and so even though I couldn't, you know, go out and welcome them in, they could come in to the outdoors and talk through the window. And I wanted to say that I have known David Greenquist since he was a little boy and uh, they lived not a couple of blocks away and David has been wonderful about coming to when it was isolated he bring his little dog, his little dog and stand outside and talk to me through the telephone, but from which I appreciate it so much because uh, he now comes and can come in and he has his dog in his pocket and he brings him out and so uh, everybody's pretty excited about seeing this darling dog. So I appreciate his. Thank you, Jean. I, I think we need to move on to another person. I really enjoyed your, your talk and reflections here, but. I think we need to move on to Martha now, but thank you so much. Hello, I'm Martha Beverly and I live in the garden homes uh, behind Friendship Village. It's a condo. Um, let's see if I can get my screen share to, to work here. Let's see, okay. Um, so I'm gonna share with you some of the, uh, of what my life has been like in the garden homes. We moved in in August, 2019, Bill and I did. And uh, in March, on March 11th, we shut down 
I went to the store and, and, and bought as many staples as I could as I could find at that point. And I have been continuing to shop every two weeks uh, before dawn, masked, gloved, and in and out as quickly as possible. We had relative freedom in the garden homes and uh, could go into stores in public places and not be quarantined like the people in the, in the big house would be for two weeks. Um, we, but we lost services like the uh, biweekly housekeeping and routine repairs only critical needs like a toilet that was overflowing or, or something like that would be addressed during the pandemic. Um, I'm a positive person and I knew I would need to maintain contact with others and continue to engage in meaningful activity. Um, and so I made sure that I participated in as many things in, in many ways to stay connected with people and to carry on my interests. The People's Church Afternoon Book Group continued on without, without a flaw with Zoom coming into our lives. Who knew about it before you know, March of uh, 2020? But we, we all have become proficient at it and what a blessing to bring us to all together in, in various ways. I'd also started sing, set, sending birthday and anniversary cards to all the garden homers and some of the people in the big house that I knew well. But during a time of isolation, little things like this become so much more important when we feel vulnerable. And, and um, I have so enjoyed doing that. My husband, Bill, was hospitalized in um, May of 2020. And when they found out how damaged his heart and his kidneys were, he chose comfort care. During the pandemic, you couldn't even go into the hospital as you were dropping off an ill person. But because he chose comfort care, my Ypsilanti son and I were able to be with him for the last 24 hours of his life, which was such a blessing. Within a week, I adopted through Rachel, who told me that Emily Cutler um, fostered stray, pregnant strays for animal rescue and had kittens about ready to, to come home with people. And Nacho moved in with me and caused me every day to feel love and laughter after Bill's passing, which I badly needed. I also added a tricycle, I had no balance, and, and I ride two laps around campus every, all last summer, two laps around campus, which gave me exercise. I encountered so many people out walking and those driveway moments without masks were precious to me. And we had a garden out in the, in the back 40, um, many uh, garden homers and some of the inside folks too have a garden plot. And so this is Larry Moon who was, it, the head, head administrator of uh, Friendship Village from the late 70s to the 90s. He lives across the, the road from me and he wrote it, tilled my garden. So uh, as, as uh, things got started, the staff at Friendship Village did everything possible to keep us entertained. We had Zoom meetings and, and classes. They instituted plenty of opportunities for uh, ways to keep us busy. And every Friday, the booze mobile would come through the garden homes, bringing us beer, wine, sometimes a mixed drink, some snacks, uh, pop, whatever we wanted. And so we put together uh, gatherings in various driveways and we everybody bring a chair. I have a lot of folding chairs and we would gather for an hour, an hour and a half during the warm weather to socialize uh, masks, but of course, drinking our drinks and uh, it was wonderful. I have a lot of feeders on my deck and here are some of the uh, Baltimore Orioles and a Cardinal feel, feeding young, just the blessing of having birds out there. And I've had over 22 species here. Um, walking in the village woods, uh, that is, a, it used to be a popcorn farm back there uh, or popcorn field and uh, now it's a 44 acres of, of uh, planted trees and, and, and also some wild things. Uh, it's just a, a pleasure to be there. On my trike, I would encounter surprises like this hot air balloon over the clubhouse as it was being built. And now we're in it and using this beautiful facility of a doe with a couple fawns. We, I often would see them in the, mo in the morning or the evening and beautiful skies overhead. Such a pleasure to be out. And I never wore a mask when I was on my tricycle. That was also a plus. 
as fall came around, my garden gave me a bounty of cucumbers and Japanese eggplants, basil, tomatoes, and I would fill my tricycle basket with this and, and drop uh, veggies off for the COVID testers who deeply appreciated that. Western Michigan University put on a wonderful presentation of uh, Sunday in the Park with George in front of the Richmond Center in September last year. And actually, James and Lois Richmond, Jim and Lois, were my roommates for, for over a year here at Friendship Village. And now uh, someone else has moved into that. They have a, an apartment inside that they are sometimes in residence. And I took plenty of Ollie classes and, and other things to stay busy. As winter pulled around, it was getting colder and uh, these driveway moments were fewer between, but even in December, Santa arrived and the Boozmobile came to the pergola in the garden home neighborhood with hot drinks and, uh, and uh, socializing. I sent over 140 Christmas cards and letters at, at Christmas uh, because I want, and I sent them out early because I wanted to stay in touch with all the people who had known Bill and my friends and um, was just blessed with phone calls and return cards and Zooms that kept me from feeling lonely in the winter. I decorated the tree, I put up a tree and decorated it because I needed it, even though I couldn't have people in the house, but I needed that tree. I began to use my treadmill every day about Christmas time and took off 20 pounds I put on somehow once the pandemic had started. The Kalamazoo Film Society went did virtual at that point by choosing new films that were available to by streaming that we would view and then we would discuss online. We had many lively conversations about films, especially the Oscar nominated ones in the early spring that were actually shown in the Kiva for free because Friendship Village wanted to keep us out of theaters that were beginning to uh, open and we were able to gather together in lim limited numbers in the spring. Uh, in, as, the, as the year turned around to 2021, we continued to live with COVID. My, my kitten grew up. I love having a kitten, but you know, it's inevitable that they're not gonna be babies forever. So Nacho's a big cat, and he, but he was a pandemic kitten, quite, quite afraid of everyone. Um, I, uh, I tripped at going into the Ashtimo Library in April, and I was already dealing with uh, two implanted teeth on the lower level. Well, now then I had three to deal with financially, and and boy, it's hard to eat an apple or corn on the cob with this kind of mouth. But um, I've made it through, and and uh, and here's a picture of that you'll see behind me when I turn this off of my deck that is planted for the hummingbirds, and I have hummingbirds there most of the time. Um, preferring, much preferring me over the, um, the, the theater that I have. In mid-year here in 2021, my family finally was able to venture to Kalamazoo and my two sons and granddaughter. Uh, Bill's last request that it was that we bury his ashes behind first base where he played high school ball. And so over a year later, this last July in his birthday week, we, we celebrated his life uh, by doing that together. And while they were here, they became cat whisperers and they socialized Nacho. And now he'll come and let you pet him because he's found that he can love more than one person and not be afraid. I've enrolled in more Osher Lifelong Learning classes and I continue with two book groups and a film group. Um, I will co-lead the Reading Together program this coming Winter at Friendship Village, we have a new book and it's a graphic novel, um, only a second or third that I've read. And I uh, hope you all join in the Reading Together program coming that will be coming up. But along with all other people at Friendship Village, I'm retreating back into more cautious living, alarmed by the new developments in COVID and the new threats. We are all taking precautions to prevent COVID from entering independent living, the apartments inside, especially which would mean uh, no more communal meals and, and more stringent restrictions. So we, everyone is taking extreme care that this does not hit our campus. I know that I can lead a rich, full, meaningful life 
in this friendship village community that I love, even during COVID, by making good choices and by reaching out safely and staying connected to others. I deeply rely on my friends, family, neighbors, and others with whom I'm linked, including my church community. We need to be responsible for ourselves and help each other as we keep moving forward. And that's my path through COVID. Thanks. Well, thank you, Joanne, Jean, and Martha for those lovely comments, for sharing, taking the time to share your experiences. As I promised, if uh, there are other people at Friendship Village who we wish to type into the chat box uh, a reflection, go ahead. In the meantime, shortly we will break into groups of four or five for 10 to 15 minutes of discussion. The computer will ask you whether you want to join a room, just click yes if you do. You'll need to unmute yourself by clicking the icon in the lower left corner of the screen. And we suggest the following questions for discussion. How has the pandemic uh, impacted your life and community? What activities have brought you enjoyment and hope? What new skills have you learned? And as usual, the guidelines for discussion, please speak the truth as you understand it to avoid inhibiting the flow of discussion. Do not comment on other comments uh, until everyone has had a chance uh, to do initial sharing. And I think we can uh, uh, proceed uh, into the discussion rooms. And now our closing words by Chris Rothbauer. May our lives be reflections of the beauty, peace, and joy that is possible in the world. And may the love we find in this place sustain us as we go on our separate ways. May it be so. Blessed be. Go now in peace. And for people who wish to participate in a virtual coffee hour, you're invited to stay online for additional small group conversations.